Hi, welcome to Nuclear Chemistry. My name is Dr. English. Today we're going to be talking about the nature of radioactivity. Specifically, we're going to look at the nature of radioactivity, a review of atomic structure, specifically atomic number. We're going to be talking about atomic mass, reminding ourselves what is an isotope, looking at the nuclear force, and finally, the stability of nuclei. So let's start out by talking about the nature of radioactivity. Chemical reactions involve the exchange or sharing of electrons. The nucleus, however, pretty much remains unchanged. So if I have solid magnesium reacting with atmospheric oxygen, ultimately I'm going to produce magnesium oxide. When the nucleus changes, however, the atom changes from one element into another. This is called transmutation. So for example, here I have cobalt-60 undergoing beta decay to form nickel-60. We will talk about how this process works later on in future tutorials. Let's start out by talking about atomic number. The nucleus is composed of subatomic particles, protons and neutrons. The number of protons is called the atomic number and is written to the lower left of the element symbol. So here I have the symbol for carbon. The atomic number typically will be located in the lower left hand corner. And a little visual of carbon as a diamond right here, one allotrope of carbon I could say. If the number of protons in the nucleus changes, the element is going to change. So for example, if I were to add a proton to this carbon, I would have an atomic number now of seven and I would be forming nitrogen. Nitrogen looks something like this. It is a gas. If I remove a proton from this carbon, I'm going to have an atomic number of five and I will form boron, which looks like this metalloid right here. Now let's review atomic mass. The number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus is called the mass number and it is written in the upper left of the element symbol. So here again I have carbon. The atomic mass typically is located in the upper left hand corner. So this 12 here represents the number of protons and neutrons in this atom of carbon. The atomic mass number can be written in different ways in nuclear chemistry word equations and you really need to be careful with this. So I could write it as the word carbon with a dash and 12. I could write it as the carbon symbol with the 12 in the upper left hand corner, or I could write it with the symbol of carbon, a dash and the 12 after. The important thing to remember is that this is representing the atomic mass. So for example, how many protons are found in an atom of iron 56? Hopefully, you said 26 and not 56 because remember the 56 is representing the atomic mass. If you look up iron on your periodic table, you will find that the number of protons or the atomic number is 26. Now let's do a little review of isotopes. Atoms with the same number of protons but different number of neutrons are called isotopes of that element. So here we have three isotopes of carbon. If I was to look at the first example, I'd say, all right, well, the number of protons must be six because my atomic number is six. But if I look at neutrons, what I need to do here is I need to take my atomic mass and subtract my number of protons. So 12 minus six is six. Therefore, my number of neutrons will be six. Let's look at the next isotope. Again, I'm dealing with carbon, so my number of protons must be six. This is my atomic mass up here, which represents my number of protons and neutrons. So if I take the difference between those two, I'm going to get seven. So seven neutrons in this particular isotope. So now for my last example. Again, I'm going to have six protons as I can see right here. My atomic mass is 14. So 14 minus six is eight. Therefore, I have eight protons. I recognize these as isotopes because they all have the exact same symbol and they all have the exact same number of protons. Remember, the number of protons will determine the identity of the element. What is different here is the number of neutrons. 
So for the first, it was six, the second, it was seven, and the last one, it was eight. Now let's look at the stability of nuclei, specifically the nuclear force. Nuclear force is the short range force acting over extremely small distances. The force is attractive and acts with nearly equal strength between protons and protons, protons and neutrons, and neutrons and neutrons. Due to the short range of these attractions, the nuclear force has practically no effect on the electrons in the atom, nor on the chemical properties of the atom. It is the competition between the repulsive electrostatic forces, that positive positive repulsion between the protons and the attractive nuclear forces occurring inside the nucleus that determines whether a given nucleus is stable. Nuclei with relatively small atomic numbers are the most stable when the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus are approximately equal. So an example, isotopes of carbon-12 and carbon-13 are both stable. Carbon-12 is going to have six protons and six neutrons. Carbon-13 is going to have six protons to seven neutrons. So the ratio of protons to neutrons is relatively one to one. But if the ratio of neutrons to protons becomes either too large or too small, which can happen, the nucleus becomes unstable and the atom becomes radioactive. So here I have americium 95. Number of protons, 95, because I see it right here. But if I take the difference between the atomic mass of 243 minus 95, I'm going to get 148 neutrons. That's a pretty big difference between the number of protons and the number of neutrons. And you might be saying, well, Dr. English, what do these parentheses mean here? The parentheses mean they only have a general idea of the atomic mass since this particular element is so unstable. Let's look at nobelium 259. The number of protons will be 102, but the number of neutrons will be 157. Again, we see a very large difference between the number of protons and the number of neutrons, which makes this particular element pretty unstable. Stability of nuclei. As the number of protons in a nucleus increases, a point is reached at which the nuclear force are no longer able to compensate for the repulsive forces between the protons. Nuclei with more than 83 protons are simply not stable and are considered radioactive and will degrade or break down into more stable nuclei. Observe the parentheses around some elements with atomic numbers higher than 83 on your reference table. That's a pretty good indicator that those elements are unstable because they can only give a general estimate of what the atomic mass would be. So what did you learn in this tutorial? We talked about the nature of radioactivity. We looked at atomic number, atomic mass, isotopes. We talked about the nuclear force, and finally, the stability of nuclei. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.